Hello everyone, it's time for another GCN Tech Clinic where you guys submit your questions to the tech show with the hashtag AskGCNTech and we do our best to try and get back to you, try and solve any little issues you may have and hopefully help you out in the process. Should we kick things off, mate? I'll kick us off with the first question. It's from KV Louver. They say, hi Albert and Ollie, I've gone down the wax rabbit hole but ended up with a stiff link which causes a ticking every time it goes through the rear derailleur and a skipping when in the harder gears. Is there a trick into making it smooth again? Is this caused by the wax? I did do or did I do something wrong in the waxing procedure? Well, should I go first or should you, you go? You go for it. Okay. I'm still getting up to speed with waxing. Yeah? Well, you pay attention, you might learn. <laughs> so when you wax a chain, yeah, the, initially the links are going to be stiff from the wax. It's all full up and you've got to run the bike, get the chain going and free all those links off. If you've found that one link is still particularly stiff, even after you've ridden it for a while, you've got a couple of different options. Option one is simply try and wiggle the chain left to right, the direction that it doesn't necessarily want to move. That'll help create a bit of extra space and free that link off. The other thing, which I actually recently tried, was um, just getting a lighter and heating up that individual link to sort of soften the wax slightly and then oh, free it off. Okay. But don't go crazy or you just melt all of the wax out. That's, That's what I do. There you go. Nice yeah. one. All right. Thanks, Next Alex. question. What we got? Next question. This is from Courtney Watters, 9300. Are there any tips or tricks to keep in town on top? Ah, sorry. I'll go again. Are there any <laughs> tips, tricks to keep in tan sidewall tyres clean? I don't know why I always struggle to say tan wall tyres. Well, you just said it then. I know. Anyway, I've heard or read a variety of different things, but the general consensus seems to be that they inevitably just get dirty to the point that they don't clean up well after a while. What would your advice on this be? I think it's just elbow grease, isn't it? <laughs> I think it is I a little bit. I think it literally is just giving a real good scrub with hot soapy water. Yeah. Um, and trying to avoid cleaning it so that you spray grease from your chain or the bike onto the, the sidewalls because then you are a little bit... Yeah, I think that's, that's a really good point that you make there. I think getting one step ahead of the game is the best way. Take the wheel out of the bike before mm. you start like degreasing the chain, otherwise that grime is going to go straight onto the tan sidewalls. Mild detergent, yeah, I'm with you on that. The other option, if you kind of want the tan wall look, is to go for the brown sidewall tyres because whilst it's not tan, they, um, they look slightly different and they don't seem to stain the same. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah totally options, agree. So. Um, next question in is from... User dash PE five QJ eight CZ eight N, which is a particularly catchy username, I must say. Yeah, I like that um, a lot of thought goes into making bikes look spotless with good reason, they say. But how do I keep my white cycling shoes looking brand new? Do we have any advice or maintenance tips for that? Right, this is my <coughs> advice. If you have white shoes, don't ride in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> or if you do wear overshoes, I'd be always like a bit pedantic about wearing overshoes, like real thin ones, even if it was a summer, if okay. it was raining, to stop, stop them getting dirty in the first place. But then what I do, real big bucket, soapy water, dip them in, take the insoles out, give them a good scrub, that helps. Scrub a dub dub. Scrub a dub dub with hot soapy water, leave them soak for a bit. I'm not sure Alex would advise this, but then I do get the pressure washer on them. What? Yeah, I get the. We are right, okay. I get the pressure washer on them and. Give them a good old. Just give us a demo of the pressure washer again. Yeah, that's good. Just like that. <clears throat> okay. Um, and it does help get the little nitty bitties out. Yeah. I can. I could go with that advice. I'm not sure. I'd be mindful of using the pressure washer, but if you're careful, that's fine. Yeah. Um, couple of other options. If your shoes are made of like you know sort of leathery material, it's a bit firmer rather than say the knitted style shoes like the DMT ones that we have. Then you can just get a soft cloth, wipe those over. If you've got the shoe that is stained, you can use a really mild abrasive cleaner. There's one which I use at home, which is like a general purpose cleaner. It's actually just called Pink Stuff. It's like a little tub of it, and it's really good at getting marks and stains off of shoes. If your shoes are of a knitted construction, like a softer material that literally just absorbs dirt, yeah. one, the one thing I have seen people do is put them into the washing machine before with a couple of old towels. I've never put my own shoes into the washing machine because it fills me with fear, but people that have done it swear by it. So if you want to be brave one day, give it a go. And yeah, your shoes mine, come out looking fresh. Mine don't fit in the washing machine. <laughs> you need a bigger washing machine. <laughs> but we did used to do that. Maybe you could go down to the Lord Dread and use those massive industrial ones yeah. out. It's such life. But if you do put them in the washing machine, maybe put some 
or towels or something yeah. in, so it doesn't mess your washing machine up. Okay, next question is from Broccoli Wobbles 776 They say, hello, I'm planning to upgrade my crank set and change the gear ratio from 50-34 to a 52-36. Do I need to bother with the chain length or just leave it as it is? Yes. You need a longer chain. You do, Definitely correct. A longer chain. Um, there's not really much else to say about it, is there? You no. just need to get a new chain that's yeah, longer. A new chain, <laughs> measure it up as you normally would. <clears throat> Wacky yeah, one. but yeah, it would need a long one. I was like, rear derailleur is going to get put under a bit of pressure. Yeah, I think. Um, what's our next question? Uh, so this is from Alan Guignard, 4204, high GCN tech. I have a gravel bike, 700C wheels and 42 tyres, currently fitted with inner tubes. Whole thing is tubeless ready. According to Silk of Calculator, I should be using 2.6 bar of pressure. And most gravel people I know ride with similar tyre pressure. The only problem is my tyres indicate a minimum pressure of 3.6 bar. Is it possible to ignore the minimum indication when switching to tubeless, or is it that my tyres are have well, they have an abnormally high minimum <clears throat> pressure? I can't say I know whether your tyres have an abnormally high minimum pressure, because a lot of highs and lows added into that bit. Um, but the really important thing to take away from using the Silker tyre pressure chart, and Josh Portner has said this recently, is that that chart is giving you what is the optimal tyre pressure for your system weight and that general tyre width. So it's it's a generalized assumption. It's not taking into account the specifics for the individual components that you're using. So just because it says, hey, the fastest setup for your time trial bike is 200 PSI, it doesn't mean you just pump them up to that because you have to take into account the consideration of the limits on the physical components that you're using. So if it says 200 PSI is what you should use, then you maybe start looking for components that allow you to use that pressure that it's saying. Okay. And so in this, in this instance, maybe that tyre is not the one that's best suited to the application that you're wanting to use it for and you could look for alternatives. That's a good point. Yeah. That is a good point. <clears throat> okay. I'll never exceed maximums or minimums of stuff, basically. Really? Yeah, always stick to what the manufacturer guideline is. Okay. Mm. Nice one. <clears throat> Next question is from Tim Dick 825 They say, tyre pressure question, God, another tyre pressure question. Should the front tyre have a lower pressure than the rear tyre? I'm guessing two thirds of the weight is on the back wheel, but I haven't tested this. There are good tyre pressure and charts online, but none give a difference for optimal front and rear tyre pressure. Well, we've just been talking about the silk one, and that does. Do you want to take us through it? Yeah, so, if you're, if you're on like a TT track bike, your weight's gonna be pretty equal. Yeah. Um, mainly because you're gonna be on the front wheel a bit more, so yeah. 50-50, road bikes, bit more weight on the back, mm -hmm. maybe a bit more if you have a slightly more upright position. Gravel bikes, they do have a slightly more relaxed geometry too, so which puts you up a bit more too. Um, so yeah, even more pressure on the back, and then mountain bikes, even more Yeah, so, so if we look off this silk tyre pressure chart, as you say, 50-50 split is, is, is as good as it's ever gonna get in the most forwards position, and the more upright you are. Mountain bike, extreme case, you're looking at a 46.5% split to a 53.5%. So there's not a huge variation there. Um, the general rule of thumb I go for, five PSI less in the front tire. Do you? Yeah. yeah. You've got a general rule of thumb you go do, for? Do the same. <laughs> the same. <laughs> oh, I just let it out when I'm riding and if I figure it out. Yeah, I, I often find guesswork is always the best. Yeah. yeah. But I did do that once, I let it out too much and realised I forgot my pump. So, <laughs> what a good idea. Oh, really okay. at home. Okay, anyway, that's um, last welcome. question, you welcome go. It's my magical world. Right, this is from Na Naomi Aona, um, 6768 IGCN, I'm 16, thanks for getting in touch, and I was wondering, would it be better to go for Shimano 105 Di2, or just a normal <coughs> mechanical Ortega group set? Thank you. Um, oh, what do I say? I think, personally I think a Shimano 105 mechanical does the job. Um, okay. I think if you have the option, I would go 105 Di2. I go electronic. I think if you're, I think if you're looking, it depends what you're you're using your bike for. Yeah. I think if you're looking to get into racing, um, you really do feel the benefits of an electronic group set because it's just a bit faster. You can get the changes done quicker. And it's a you nice can, thing to have, isn't it? Yeah. You can whack through the gears super quick. I I was lucky enough to <coughs> race on both, and I actually switched back and forth a couple of times whilst I was racing. And I noticed when I went to mechanical, it just was. a bit clunky when you're yeah. like, mainly when you're going <clears throat> over a climb and the pressure's really on and you're on yeah. that like crest and you just want to snap up quick yeah. to stay on the wheel, mechanical compared to electronic is slower and you lose that little bit. Well I'm in complete agreement with you on all of those points but one sort of aspect I'm going to suggest and throw out there is that if you're 16 and you're perhaps 
pooling together as much money as you can to get riding and racing, I'd probably go for whatever is the cheapest option. Yeah. And that way, you're not going to stretch your budget and you're going to hopefully have a little bit of cash left over to do some running repairs on your bikes, maybe keep the bike going and maybe enter some racing, like go racing, do some events, and then you've freed up a bit more cash rather than imagine having like a fancy bike and then be like, oh, I've got any money left to go do racing or riding now. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think it depends on your circumstances. Yeah. If you can go towards saving a bit of money, I think it definitely helps. And if you are 16 getting into racing, I think you don't, you don't need fancy equipment. No. You don't. No. You can, you can, you can smash it. Okay, all right. Well, I hope that has helped everyone out with their questions. Once again, if we didn't answer your question, apologies, and keep commenting it in the comments section down below. And one week, we might get to it. We right. Might. <laughs> right, see you later.